Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming this morning. My name is Jennifer Hearn. I'm the Chief Officer and Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Sports, Youth and Culture. And I'm joined this morning by the Minister, the Honourable Osborne Bodden. And we're here today to talk about National Heroes Day 2014 and the public nomination process to nominate your hero. I'm going to turn it over to the Minister who's going to give you um, an announcement about next year's theme. Minister Bodden. Thank you, Jennifer. Good morning, all. As one of the premier formal cultural events on the national calendar, it is fitting that for Heroes Day in January 2014, we will celebrate and honor those who have contributed to the development of our community through the promotion and preservation of our cultural heritage. When the government was asked to select the theme for next National Heroes Day, we were certain that as a government, we wanted to celebrate our culture and our people. And so we tasked the staff to develop National Heroes Day around this theme. In recognition of the fact that the topic is so large and varied, we accepted the recommendation that we would narrow the celebration to a subset of culture that is cultural heritage. For the purposes of National Heroes Day 2014, cultural heritage is defined as the legacy of tangible physical artifacts and the intangible attributes of a people that are inherited from past generations, maintained in a national identity, and bestowed for the benefit of future generations. For these awards, we are looking at cultural heritage which be began before the year 1970, even though it may still be present today. We have already had a very good reaction to the theme since it was mentioned last week, and I encourage the public to ensure that a proper foundation is laid in honoring those who have contributed to the Cayman Islands cultural heritage over the years. The quality of the honorees will only be as good and as comprehensive as the quality of the nomination that we receive. As far as tangible heritage, therefore, we are looking for those who contributed to things such as buildings and historic places, monuments, artifacts, and different objects which are significant to our way of life. Similarly, for intangible cultural heritage, we are looking for those who contributed to our social practices, rituals, festive events, arts, customs, ways of life, traditional craftsmanship, and oral traditions and expressions. We have put together a committee made up of representatives on the cultural entities under our ministry, including the CNCF, the National Gallery, the National Archives, and the National Museum, as well as representatives from each district, including the sister islands, who have agreed the definitions and processes for the evaluation of the nominations and will be charged with ensuring that the process is, a complete and is as complete and transparent as possible. I'm really excited about seeing the outcome of the process and I look forward to National Heroes Day next year, which will honor those who have contributed to the cultural foundation upon which the Cayman Islands is built today. Thank you, Minister. And once again, um, last year, you may remember, was the first year that we went out for public nominations for the heroes that we wanted to recognize. And we had such a fantastic response that it, we've made a decision, Cabinet's made the decision to go in with the public nomination process again this year. We're going with the same categories as we had last year. So they are early pioneer, which is a person who's made a significant contribution to the promotion or preservation of uh, the Cayman Islands cultural heritage prior to 1960. And then we have pioneers, and these are the people whose contribution occurred between 1960 and 2003. The early pioneers and the pioneers are limited to a total of 50 honorees between the two categories. These are the, the more significant awards of the award categories. These are the recipients who will receive a pin as well as certificate and be recognized on National Heroes Day. The other categories that we have for nominations are Emerging Pioneer, which is someone whose contribution is, has occurred from 2003 to the present. We have the Memorial Scroll, which is a way to recognize someone who made a contribution but has um, passed on. And finally, we have the Long Service Award. And this is the award category for those people who have, been, who have served 10 years or more. They may not be the pioneers or the leaders, but they've played an integral role in terms of the promotion and preservation of cultural heritage. So the minister spoke a bit about the definition, and he did um, speak to the fact that the committee has chosen 1970 as the benchmark 
in order to look at when the, the cultural heritage uh, first started. So it, even though it might have started in 1970, it could still be present today. And we wanted to use that timeline because it's really about heritage. And the 1970 was picked as a, as a watershed time for the Cayman Islands. So the public nomination process opens today and it runs until the end of September. The 30th of September is the deadline for public to make nominations. The nomination forms are available on our ministry website, which is www.ministryofhealth.gov.ky. And um, you can submit the instructions for submitting the nomination forms are on the website as well. So once the nominations are received, the committee that the minister referred to will review the nominations and um, identify those people who are going to be honored at National Heroes Day 2014. So Minister, unless you had anything you wanted to add? No. no. Um, I'll open it up for any questions. Hannah? Nations were received last year? Uh, a hundred, a hundred and forty? hundred and it, we received, I can't remember the exact number, Hannah, and again, if you need the exact figure, we can get it and send it to you, but it was well over a hundred nominations that we received for all five categories. <clears throat> Any other question? What's the total number of nominations will you like award? When the two categories of early pioneer and pioneer, there's a maximum number of honorees of 50. Mm -hmm. For the other categories, there's no limit in terms of the number of people that will be recognized. So the first two categories of early pioneer and pioneer are the ones that are restricted in terms of the numbers that will be recognized, and the others are not. So we want as many nominations as possible. Um, we want to make sure that the committee has a lot of work to do, although I'm sure they'd be very upset if I, for me saying that. But um, I think, you know, the minister said in his remarks, we want to get some really good nominations and we want people to take the time to nominate someone and give us really good information about it. Because one of the other things that we're charged with doing for National Heroes Day in partnership with the National Archives and GIS is um, the collateral information, the promotional commemorative material. Last year we did a poster, previous years they've done booklets. So the information that we get from people in the nomination process will also help point us in directions of where we'd like to feature some, some of those things as well. And the awards they receive are pins and certificates. That's right. For early pioneers and pioneers, they'll receive a pin and a certificate. The other categories receive a certificate. Um, what's the, the amount of funding that you need for this or the amount of money that you'll put towards it? Well, the uh, budget is actually spread across our ministry. Our ministry is responsible this year for the promotional budget. And then the protocol office is responsible for the actual day, um, for the planning and promotion of the day and the, the festivities around that. So I don't have their budget figure. Um, our promotional budget is, I'm going to ask Joel, I'm looking at him because he's been working on it don't remember but um, yeah so our, our ministry's budget role is, is quite small in comparison to the protocol offices uh, and again if you want we can get that information and we can send it to both you and Hannah yeah okay um, will the members of the board who are I, you mentioned from CNCF um, the Museum National Gallery etc will those people with the list of people on the board be made public as well Sorry, the, the members of the committee? Yes, please. Um, yeah, yeah, we can mm -hmm. make that public as well. As Minister mentioned his remarks, it's the, the, the CEO or the managing director of those cultural entities. And then we also have district representatives oh. um, from each district who are on the committee as well. Um, Joelle, yeah. help me. We have Lucille Seymour from Georgetown, mm -hmm. Miss Raina Jefferson from West Bay, Daryl Rankin from East, East End. Miss um, Mayor Lawrence from Bondtown. Yeah. And Northside, I think it was. Uh, Aud Audrey Bott, Audrey, Audrey Whitaker, Whitaker, and right. Miss Liz Walton from Cayman Brack. So people who are well known, who are well steeped in history, and yeah. and Daryl Rankin from East End, yeah, as well as the team from the National Archives and GIS, um, both of whom I think, if you saw last year's work um, for National Heroes Day, the poster and the pin. Um, and the work that they did together was fantastic. And so I'm really excited to see what they come up with this year, with this year's theme. 
Sorry, I just have one more question. Yeah. Um, this is the second year in a row that you're doing the public nominations. Why did you decide to do this in the first place? When our ministry was approached last year to do the Heroes in Youth Services, um, one of the complaints that we had heard in previous Heroes days was, you know, well, what happened to so-and-so? Why wasn't this person on the list, and how come this person didn't get recognized? And in the past, when while, while the committee is very representative, and they've always had a committee, um, I think it's very difficult to expect a committee of, of people to be able to identify everybody that needs exactly. to be recognized. And um, so the ministry last year took the decision to open it up for a public nomination process to first of all try and get everybody who need to be recognized recognized, but also to just try and engage the public a little more in Heroes Day. Um, you know, as, as the minister said, it's, it's a time, it's one of the premier events on our national calendar. It's, it's where we need to be proud of all the things that we're celebrating as part of National Heroes Day. And the ministry thought that by having a public nomination process, we could just engage the public a little bit more and, and get them a little more interested and a little more bought in in terms of attending Heroes Day and, and feeling like they were a part of it. So not only um, you know knowing that the person that they nominated got recognized, but just to think I had a part to play in, in getting this and making it happen. And so that was why we went with the public nomination process in the first place. And then because we had such a good response last year, um, the committee last year recommended that it be done going forward as well. So we've done it again this year. Did you want to add something to that, Joelle? Sorry? That was one thing I wanted to say, yeah. Um, one thing that we said last year, <coughs> excuse me, was don't assume that someone else will nominate the person that you think needs to be recognized. Mm -hmm. Take the time to nominate somebody that you think is deserving and worthy of the recognition. Um, and it, it was quite ironic last year because um, when we were doing the promotions, I was going around saying to everybody, don't assume that they're going to nominate the person you think needs to be recognized. And then one person that I had really wanted to make sure got recognized didn't get nominated. And I felt terrible because I hadn't nominated them. I, it was, you know, do as I say, not as I do. So um, this year I'm going to make sure that I do make the nominations for the people that I want to see recognized. But just to, to really encourage people, even though you might think, well, you know, like, Aunt Julia. Surely someone's going to nominate Aunt Julia, right? So why should I take the time? You need to take the time. If you think Aunt Julia should be nominated for one of these awards, then take the time to put the nomination in. Because unfortunately, if you don't, there's a chance that someone else is going to assume the same thing and she won't be nominated. And the committee took the position last year that if the person wasn't nominated, we weren't going to recognize them. So really, please don't assume that someone else will nominate. If there's someone you want recognized, take the time to submit that nomination. Thank you, Joelle, for reminding me. Any other questions? Minister, did you want to make a few closing yeah. remarks? Thanks, Jen. Uh, just to say that uh, we want to make this Heroes Day a real celebration of our people. Uh, we, we are looking forward to good nominees, and we're looking forward to people coming out, really enjoying the day. After all of the awards, we, we're hoping to have a, a nice festive atmosphere with local music, local food, local craft on display uh, to, to have a really nice, enjoyable day. So um, looking forward to it, and I, I hope that the public get as excited as we are about it. Okay. Thank you, Minister. So the deadline for nominations, again, is the 30th of September. The nomination forms are available on our ministry website, which is www.ministryofhealth.gov.ky. Please take the time, make a nomination, and I'll look forward to seeing you all at Heroes Day. Thank you very much. Thank you.